one of the things that I wanted to mention uh, with regard to the final mass distribution, and this is just sort of a word of caution, that is a fairly powerful tool. It is very handy. It saves a lot of work in terms of figuring out where those masses need to be. But one thing to be careful of is that if you've been editing or making modifications to the model, you also want to be careful when you do that because it can make up for any errors that might creep into the model. And just as a demonstration, we'll look at this load case two final mass distribution. You can see we are using the lump masses station type and the final mass distribution. So this is in the end, the overall longitudinal mass distribution. So it's going to subtract out any predefined loads that we have from the structural weight, the volume groups, the tanks, that nodal group for the engine and the plate groups for the cargo mass. With the additional mass distribution, we were just adding to all of those existing things. We had our structural weight, tanks, engine, and cargo plates, and then this was additional that got added on top. Now, wh where you need to be careful is if some of these accidentally got deleted from the loading condition, or a tank got corrupted, or the, the group got deleted in the volume groups. If some of these accidentally were deleted or corrupted, the elements inside got deleted. Maybe the, the tank still exists, but it's no longer properly defined, um, and you're not getting the full volume or the full mass from that tank, or if the engine node was deleted, we no longer have the engine weight there. When you're using the final mass distribution, the loads group will just subtract out everything that's there and make up for it with smeared mass in that area. So it won't change the overall mass distribution along the length, but the weights at that section may not be where you expect them. Like for this engine mass, we're expecting it to land on those eight nodes right there. If this got deleted, the final mass distribution would smear that mass into the rest of the nodes around it in this section here. And as an example, we can uh, let's say we'll just do the hydrostatic balance and we'll hydrostatic balance on all load cases here. And if we view the, the water plane, we can see that we'll swing around to a better view here. We can see that our additional mass distribution and our final mass distribution are virtually the same. And you can see it updates when, oh, well, it didn't update. So let me hit refresh between making those changes so you can see that it's not really moving. Now let's say we corrupted our tanks. So for both of those two load cases, the final mass distribution, I'm gonna delete all of the tanks and modify it. And we'll do the same thing to our additional mass distribution. Delete all the tanks and modify. Uh, if I rebalance all the load cases, you can see that when we were using the additional mass distribution, we lost a lot of weight and the water plane sunk quite a bit. But if we check the final mass distribution, we're right back where we were, even though we no longer have anything in any of our tanks. So that was the thing that you need to be careful of when you're using the final mass distribution.